might have an aneurysm on where I'm going to put one of the most successful staple Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the entire game. Evenly matched is... What are the top Yu-Gi-Oh staple cards for September 2023? My guys, this information will determine if you go be king of your friend group or the build old tree of your neighborhood. I'm so depressed I can't even blame. Would not want to be the build old truth, I'm just saying. In case you didn't know, I'm Leon, and today I'm going to be giving you some information that you need to know to play good, fun Yu-Gi-Oh. To be honest, we just might be maskists. It's a love-hate relationship with this game, but we still here for some reason. Of course, Big Dog, if you like this particular content, then consider joining the Shadow Gang so you can learn how to clap your <laughs> opponents up with your blindfold on and your hands behind your back. So I would not suggest it because they might be cheating. So a staple Yu-Gi-Oh card is a commonly played generic Yu-Gi-Oh card and in a situation we are only going to use popular cards that give a leg up on our opponent. I would say right now the most important thing in Yu-Gi-Oh is versatility. Being able to have a card to be able to stop your opponent's huge plays but also protect your opponent from making those huge plays is game. And as you can see right now, I have five different cats like a crazy lady. They're all pretty self-explanatory, so let's go ahead and jump on in. There are actually quite a few Yu-Gi-Oh decks that love to play spell cards, and Anti-Spell Fragments would be an amazing card against them, but only if you're going first. And I gotta say, my guy, unless you got fake dice, this is a card that's going to be sideboard worthy when you know you're going first. After a loss. Now to just say it that way, we should probably never play this card because we're never going first after a game, right? Anti-Spell Fragrance is extremely powerful because spell cards are on a rise, but there are a lot of spell cards in the game that can play around Spell Fragrance, so watch out. Kind of like how the most powerful spell cards in the game are the book cards. My boy, librarians and Harry Potter would be proud. If you're a Yugi Boomer like myself, you love the versatility of the book cards, being able to flip your monsters face down to dodge important effects, but also being able to disrupt your opponent and flip their cards face down. My guy is just like that one time at Calabasas in the strip club, everything face down. Let's say both Book of Eclipse and Book of Moon are top Yu-Gi-Oh staples. These cards are being played in just about every single top deck in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Bonus if you can play both. Again, the name of the game is Versatility Big Dog, and these cards pack the biggest punch when it comes to versatile Yu-Gi-Oh cards that allow you to escape situations as well as put your opponent in a sticky one itself. Unfortunately, not all book cards are the same. I would say Book of Lunar Eclipse? Staple those divorce papers together. Unfortunately, Lunar Eclipse does not provide the versatility of both Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse. Book of Lunar Eclipse needs two monsters on the field and requires you to discard. If your opponent doesn't have those two monsters, you go put a monster to flip face down? My guy, ain't nobody in the Shadow Gang throwing it back like that. We not with that. The drawbacks of this card is just way too big to be playing over Book of Eclipse. Though I will admit though, Book of Eclipse can be countered by an Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Book of Lunar Eclipse cannot, but that should not factor in. The Bestio Monsters. Should you be playing the Draggy Boys in your main deck? This is actually a really tricky one. I think that if your deck can actually supplement the Bestio Monsters without your opponent having a Light and Dark deck, then 100% they should be in your main board. But if you ain't doing that, my guy, this is a sideboard worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card, and that's why I'm putting it borderline. The Bestial Monsters can stop some of the best strategies in the game, but in some strategies, they're completely useless. Like, why did you even consider playing this? And that's why you should be really cautious when playing these cards. Call by the Grave. The crazy thing about Call by the Grave is that if we were in 2022, this card would be godly. But we're not in 2022. We're actually in 2023. I checked. With that being said, I would say that Cold by the Grave is another borderline Yu-Gi-Oh card. If your deck literally loses to Droll and Lockbird, you need to be mainboarding this card. There are some matchups where Call by the Grave does absolutely nothing. Then there's other matchups where Call by the Grave is, hey, you, change of heart. Also, Mr. Take Your Bitch. I think cards like Change Art and Mind Control have their place in the meta. There are times where you can take control of your opponent's strongest monsters like Berlin Dragon and Chaos Angel, which is huge. And then there are times when you're looking at Change Art and you wish that you could use this effect on your girlfriend. Baby, come back. You ain't for the whole team. I need you to be just for me. Just for me. 
And here's where we get to a really interesting spot because I think that Change of Heart is worlds better than Book of Lunar Eclipse, but I would not play it in my sideboard and I would not main board it right now. So I would say definitely staple those divorce papers together. Hey man, at least think about it this way. If you snatched her and they could snatch her back, she for the streets, let her go. Sometimes my ex does live rent-free in my head, but Cosmic Cyclone will live rent-free in my main board almost a lot of the times. Cosmic Cyclone is a nice median between Twin Twisters and Mystical Space Typhoon. It doesn't require you to discard a card and it actually gets rid of the threat almost entirely from time to time. There are a ton of continuous spells and traps and filled spell cards that will not be able to use their effect because of a well-timed Cosmic Cyclone. This is probably the best form of background removal in the entire game right now. The only drawback to Cosmic Cyclone is if you're actually in a competitive tournament and time is called. It's never happened to me before, but I'm pretty confident it's happened to somebody. Cross out Designator, guys. I don't want to admit it. I don't want to admit it. I don't want to. Cross out Designator is about two years old, and since its inception, I've said that this card is completely trash. Cheeks. Doo doo water. And up until now, I was completely right. But now, I have to say something different about Cross out Designator. This card is still ass, cheeks, doo doo water. No, it's not that. This card's actually really, really good right now. The reason why Cross Out Designator is so powerful is because cards like Droll and Logbird. Sometimes there's absolutely no counter to that card and you need to make extreme measures to be able to get around it. But then there are other really powerful spells and trap cards that everybody is playing, like the book cards, that Cross Out Designator can also be an answer to. One thing that I've always hated about Cross Out Designator is that you'd have to play weird cards that may not be good against your opponent just to stop them from using it on you. But the good thing about Cross Out right now is that normally it's pretty good against them too. Yu-Gi-Oh might just turn into who can get to their Cross Out Designators first. Darko is actually sneaky, really, really good. Darko is incredibly good into strategies where you want your own monsters destroyed. Think of decks that use a uh, baby Sarasaurus. <laughs> And without getting too much into specifics, there's also plenty of other decks like Unchained that can take full advantage of wiping their board and not just the opponent's. It actually can put you in a really good spot by using this card, but also has the benefit of getting rid of your opponent's cards and getting rid of cards your opponent might give you. With that being said, I would 100% say Dark Hole is a borderline Yu-Gi-Oh card, but Dark Ruler No More is not. Dark Ruler No More is in a really tricky spot. This card is really, really good against certain things, but also incredibly bad against a lot of things. When you take into consideration in some of the most popular decks being played right now, they either have an out to this card if this would be good against it, or it's just not good against it. I would say right now, Dark Ruler No More is staple these divorce papers together, and it seems that staple these divorce papers together isn't necessarily an indication of how these cards are, because they still can be good, just not optimal. I mean, it, unless it's Book of Lunar Eclipse, that card's that's definitely some staple these divorce papers. Dimensional Barrier, my guy. Another card that is awesome going first. This card actually completely wrecks some of the best decks in the entire game, but remember what I said, going first. Dimensional Barrier, I would say is 100% side worthy. This card is really, really good against some of the top decks in the game, like I said, and is a powerful card that could end their entire game. Just make sure you know you're going first. Evenly matched, my guy. The only thing fair about this card is it's unfair. Now you just might have an aneurysm on where I'm going to put one of the most successful staple Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the entire game. Evenly matched is... Staple those divorce papers together. Now there's actually multiple partners about evenly matched right now. Yes, this card is still really good. I mean, it actually fits the category of these three cards before this one. But then there's situations where it's really, really bad. The first and most important problem with Evenly Match is that it forces you to skip your battle phase. And in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, you're really going to need your battle phase. A lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! decks don't really care about losing their board. If they get another turn, they're just going to build the same board or just OTK. And the next problem about Evenly Match is that so many good decks actually play around the card. Again, I wouldn't say that Evenly Match is a terrible card. If you catch your opponent slipping, you catch him slipping. But at the same time, I would probably play other cards in the game. I would say Forbidden Chalice right now is just as bad as Book of Lunar Eclipse. And the biggest reason is because these two cards are being played. Imagine using this and then they just flip it face down and you're like, oh no. Forbidden Lance is 100% actually a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. 
Forbidden Lands can actually protect you from some of the best spell and drop cards in the game, which could come up. And now we're finishing up the Forbidden series with Forbidden Droplet. This card is 100% borderline in strategies that don't need a ton of cards to be able to pop off. This card is really, really good for the exception of one powerful Yu-Gi-Oh deck. And the best thing about it is that your opponent can't respond to it. Harpy's Feather Duster is ironically just a sideboard worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card. It can be a complete blowout in certain situations, and if you're playing certain cards, you may want to consider main boarding it, but overall, it's just best suited for the sideboard right now. I would also say Kaijus are really good for the sideboard for particular situations. These cards can be amazing, but not every situation a Kaiju is needed. Now, Fenrir is actually a crazy good Yu-Gi-Oh card, and the biggest reason is when you summon Fenrir, they think you're playing Kashira. So a lot of times, players will actually respect you and use their book cards preemptively on the Kashira Fenrir. Now you can play whatever deck you're actually playing. But if Kashira Fenrir is left unchecked, not only does it search as another Cyber Dragon, it also can get rid of an opponent's important card it's the perfect bait in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Kurtakero the Divine Carnet is also one of the best cards in the game, my guy. This card can be a Kaiju for one, it can be a Kaiju for six. But the best thing about it is that she summons herself to your side of the field and gets really, really choky and allows you to finish games fast. And even if she doesn't, you're gonna be snatching one of your opponent's monsters to do your bidding. This is actually incredibly good. Lava Golem hits into my sideboard worthy. I don't think that Lava Golem is better than Kaijus right now because a lot of times players just summon one monster. Literally, they'll just put one on the field and be like, Lava Golem me, bro. I like the guaranteedness of Divine Kernet Kirikara and the Kaijus over Lava Golem, though there are situations where Lava Golem is just like feasting on so many things. I would 100% not main board Lightning Storm. To be honest with you, Lightning Storm's best attribute is that it's a Harpy's Feather Duster pretty much. Nobody with the mind is putting their monsters in attack position anyways. This card is going to primarily be used to blow out your opponent's spell and trap cards, which is really good, but keep in mind it's incredibly slow and restrictive. Now you know the world is probably coming to an end when I gotta say Raigeki is worse than Dark Hole. The problem with Raigeki is that it doesn't destroy your own cards. I would say Raigeki is in the same class as evenly matched Dark Ruler No More and Change Your Heart. Yes, this card can be very, very effective, but you're probably better off playing some of these other cards. There are a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh players that are using spell cards to be able to summon their monsters and retaliating C literally checks them at the front door. This card is a great sideboard worthy card. Also shout out to Contact C because when this card is removed from the field, when they finally get rid of it, you can search Contact C, which works against those spell heavy decks that want to summon monsters pretty good too. Retaliating C is pretty crazy. Just like how Solemn Judgment is actually a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. I would say that it's borderline. It's extremely good if your deck is really weak to important spell and trap cards that may be main boarded or side boarded, but it also serves a purpose of saying no to your opponent's most important cards. Now, Solemn Strike, on the other hand, does have its moments where it could be really good. Being able to stop a critical synchro summon or maybe an exceed summon, amazing. But the problem with this card is that it's slow meaning that it's less versatile than the others. I would say that Solemn Strike is in the staple those divorce papers together, but again, in the company of Change of Heart, Dark Ruler No More, and Raigeki and Evenly Matched, these cards could make waves in the very, very most correct situation, just not really probable. Super Polymerization is one hell of a banger Yu-Gi-Oh card, guys. This card is crazy at stopping your opponent from going into their full combo mode. Especially now since Konami keeps printing generic fusion cards, this card's crazy good. I don't know about you guys, but there's an Art Shin King Calamity lock being ran around. Go ahead and check out this video if you haven't, and I'll show you everything you need to know. This card actually stops it by summoning Draco Equest, which I think is a cool Yu-Gi-Oh card. Triple Tactic Stanley. Talent is a solid choice Yu-Gi-Oh card, though I will say you this, it's probably the worst solid choice Yu-Gi-Oh card because players are starting to get riff drafty on their interruptions on your turn. One thing that I have been noticing is players have been doing everything in their availability to avoid activating monster effects on your main phase, which makes this card a little bit worse. And also you could say the same for Triple Tactics Thrust. Now don't get me wrong, if you're playing something like a going second deck, you still probably use these cards because it gives you a bigger option to be able to break your opponent's board. But overall, I would say that these cards are lower on the solid choice than some of the other cards presented, but they still do get their job done, getting you exactly what you need to be able to clap up your opponent. And lastly, my guys, 
Exceed on good. There are certain Exceed strategies in Yu-Gi-Oh that are completely problematic. I remember telling you guys to buy this card when it was a couple of dollars. Now they're about 20 a pop. And it's actually for good reason. Not only does this card solve that Exceed problem, your opponent can't even use anything to stop it. It's like a super ball. Exceed Encore is one of the best sideboard Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the game. Consider playing it if you have it. If you didn't get these before I told you they skyrocketed in the price, that's unfortunate. But if you follow the channel, I'm gonna be giving you some more cards very, very soon.